Hello. Hey Tara, how you doing? Hey. Okay, so how about we start by you introducing yourself to Australia? Hello Australia, I'm Tara Lightfoot. And, and how did you come into being Tara Lightfoot and playing guitar? Oh, that's a good one. I mean, I remember the first song I learned was Back in Black by ACDC. Great. Um, I think I was like 11 or something, and I really wanted to know. Maybe it was Hell's Bells, actually. It was Hell's Bells, of course. It's a lot easier. Um, I remember just wanting to know like what that sound was, and my uncle came over with a guitar and plugged it into an amp for me, and I remember making horrible sounds with it in my parents' kitchen <laughs> as a little kid and just being addicted, you know, like, it was so cool. I didn't put the guitar down, I think, until I was about, like, finished high school, you know. I, I literally would, would come home from school, play guitar, and fall asleep with it every night. Um, yeah, it's, it's always been a part of me, for sure. Great, and the new album coming out, Consider the Speed, where does the title come from? Well, the title was, I wrote it at the beginning, so basically there's been a little bit of a gap here between my last record and this one, and I was uh, waiting to be at home to start writing, and I, I was really putting a lot of parameters um, on my writing process and everything. And I remember thinking, okay, now, now I'm going to start, I'm going to work for two weeks at home and, and get this done. And at the beginning I was on the phone with somebody and I wrote, uh, just kind of subconsciously, I wrote, consider the speed on a piece of paper. And I thought, what the heck does that mean? I have no idea. So I just pasted it up on the wall of my uh, music studio and, um, and tried to figure it out. And I think now that we're in a pandemic and I wrote about a, a love story, you know, um, the, the track Consider the Speed is about considering how fast something happens. Like if you're falling for somebody so fast, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Does it matter? You know? No, no. I, I like that it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, you recorded tracks in Memphis, so tell me about that experience. Oh, so beautiful. So I worked with um, this producer, Jay Newland, and he actually had the idea that we were going to record in New York together because that's where he's uh, kind of from. And then a couple weeks before, he said, you know, have you ever been to Royal Studios in Memphis? I said, no. <laughs> uh, and so that's what we decided to do. I went with this, like, Memphis crew. It was amazing. So it's um, the studio that belonged to Willie Mitchell when he was alive, and they recorded Al Green and Peebles, like, heavy, heavy hitters, and I got to just walk into this band and be play in their band for four days. That's how I pictured it. And I think you can hear that that looseness on the record. It's like live, it's loose, it's chill, it's free. Um, and that's what I was kind of going for. So, so when you walk into studios of that caliber, do you, is there some sort of feeling that comes over you when you walk in that's different to say a modern day studio? Oh yeah, I mean it, it's <laughs> there's insulation on the roof that's still just kind of hanging out since the '60s, I think. Um, it's it's a very unpretentious place, and I love that. Like the place where I'm from in uh, Hamilton, in Canada, uh, is is lacking pretension. Let's say mm -hmm. nobody. We're kind of a no bullshit town. Um, you know, everybody's just kind of doing their work and hanging out and doing what they want to do and. You just let people do what they want to do. There's no social pressures. There's no, you know, there. and it, at Royal, too, it's the same thing. There's no pressure. You just walk in there and you want to make great music because that's what's always been done. It's sort of matter of fact. <laughs> so do you take a particular approach with your songwriting? Like, are you a um, put on a loop and riff or j just sit with a guitar and put it into your iPhone kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I tried it all different ways this time, because this is my, like, third or fourth record. Like, I made a live record somewhere in there. Um, of course, I can't remember now. That's hilarious. That's great. <laughs> um, but, I mean, on this record, I wrote, like, Paper Thin Walls. I sat down at a drum set and, and was singing and playing the drums. I can't even play the drums. I just thought, like, this is what I'm hearing, and, there, and there's a different time signature on there that you can hear when you, when you listen now. 
Um, but I, sure, I record on iPhone. Um, I actually set up a little studio for myself this time, which was really luxurious in many ways. Um, and I learned a lot about recording my own demos. I did, I think I recorded like 40 songs and then picked like 12. Yeah. Wow, well, that's so great. It, yeah, it was it was really fun, and I mean, of course, I didn't follow every idea all the way down the hill, because you don't need to. But I found the ones that mattered, and uh, and tried to follow those a little farther. And do you, when you go into the studio, do you have a particular sort of set routine on how you like to approach your day in the studio? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly changed because now I like to start a little earlier. <laughs> um, you know, I think. I think everybody, the, the greatest thing for me, and maybe this is my Canadian-ness coming through, um, I am a big time balancer of, of everybody's kind of vibe. So, and, and Royal has such a great vibe to begin with, um, but I love it when everybody's happy. That's what I want, uh, especially when we're making this record. It was so important to me to have the vibe just be, uh, just kind of happy, Everybody would get their work done, like we'd all work together and try and find, that helps, I feel like that helps with inspiration and it helps with finding like those great takes and those great performances. If somebody's not comfortable, um, then I don't think it's, I don't think that's the right thing to do. So my whole vibe was just like, how can I make everybody else comfortable while getting what I need? And all I needed was just to sing into that microphone in the vocal booth. It, it's like the number nine mic, I think they call it, but it's it's beautiful. It was incredible. <laughs> and then how do you switch that to a, what, what would a particular day in the life on the road be like pre-pandemic? Oh, pre-pandemic, yes, good question, because today it's like driving to the grocery store. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, for us, we, we were road dogs at, at the best of times. I mean, we would, uh, if it made sense, we would play a show and then leave that night and drive to the next place. If it was far away or if there was a festival. I mean, I remember when we toured the States, um, we were flying back up to Canada in the summertime to play festivals and then coming back down and doing these opening tours. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, we were sleepless um, and kind of just go, go, go. But I, I love that, you know? And of course now, i do anything to get back there. As, as every touring musician would, I think. Sure. Um, you're two days out from the album, here in Australia anyway. What is there songs that you really think are going to connect the most with people, and what do you want people to take from the album? Yeah, I mean, the two songs that I would say are most important to me, because I've been trying to, I've been trying to make like sort of a Neil Young record with like this all these ballads on one side and like the crazy horse on the other side mm -hmm. um, that's been sort of an inspiration for me for a long time but so I think my two tracks that I would suggest are Consider the Speed which is the title track which no one has yet heard which excites me greatly <laughs> it's like a huge rocker super fun party song um, and then Lost You Forever comes right after it and that's one of the most tender road songs that I think I've ever written in my life and, and it's about like not not letting that thing that that you're hoping for not letting it go and not not letting life just pass you by but like rather grab it take it take what you need get what you need and uh, you know don't have any regrets if that makes sense sure and you mentioned inspiration so you're only allowed to pick one from each category your biggest inspiration in music and in life in general Oh, and, okay. Biggest inspiration in music. I have to select Sister Rosetta Tharp because she was so badass. And she played an SG, like me, which I love. Um, in life, I mean, I just read Willie Nelson's biography and I loved it. So I pick him because he's kind of just like a vibe man. <laughs> Great. And is there any music at the moment that you're listening to? Yeah, I mean, one thing I've been listening to a lot of uh, lately, and it's been super helpful during the pandemic, is uh, Nina Simone, Break Down, Let It All Out, Break Down and Let It All Out. She's like incredible. That record, uh, Wild Is The Wind, that's my favorite right now. Perfect. Have you learned any new skills in pandemic? 
any new skills. I mean, I was considering doing uh, accounting. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, it's funny. I always thought I would have the time to learn to play the cello. Uh, and somebody gave me one. I still don't have time. Not working. <laughs> Not working. <laughs> okay, and yeah. any, we're going to finish up now. So have you got any final words for the readers, listeners in Australia? Just thank you so much, and uh, it, I can't wait to get back to your beautiful country. Perfect. We'll leave it at that today. Great. Thanks a lot for your time. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye.